So, Silk Song, huh? Uh, what now? Well, Silk Song might be around the corner. Close enough. Hollow Knight might have been beaten in almost every possible way, but I still had a thought. Can you beat Hollow Knight without doing nail damage? Right off the bat, the title of this video lied to you. To my knowledge, there is no actual way of beating this game without doing nail damage, but I still did this, just to see how much nail damage can be avoided. First of all, let's see what I will count as nail damage throughout this run. And, just to be frank, direct contact with the physical nail equals nail damage. See, it's simple. So that means spells, dream shield, weaverlings, and any other way of dealing damage is fair game. And now that the rules are set, let us begin. I started the game by falling into a hole. And after breaking down a door and falling again, I talked to a total chad and I jumped inside the well. It really didn't take long until I got to the first problem room. Look, I'm just gonna be frank with you, I'm not good at this game. So I failed to kill the Aspis without the nail, but it might be possible to kill the first one with this spy right here. And the two other ones spawned light up for a perfect kill, but I'm no pro, so onwards and upwards. Oh, by the way, remember this room right here? Because I'm sure I'm gonna remember it. Okay, so we get to the actual first forced nail use, Grass Mother. We kinda need to kill her because there is no other way to get the Sly and buy the Lumifly Lantern, an item that we will need later. And in order to avoid the necessary nail usage, quit out to the menu when her babies burst out of her and come back later to talk to Sly. Oh boy, I hope you like seeing Vengeflies for 2 hours. Because after you get Sly to dirt mode, just get ready because there might be Geo rocks and grubs you can use to get Geo. But yeah, the farming for the lantern involves luring these 4 bugs into this worm for 2 hours. For 12 Geo each run. So after 2 hours of excruciating pain and boredom, I finally got the lantern from Sly. And after that I just went on my way to Crystal Peaks. I swear to god, if I see one more primal ass with hard joke, I swear I'm gonna fucking lose it. This flying asshole just kept getting in my way and even though it took only about 10 minutes to get to this shit, I swear this was the most infuriating part of the challenge and those guys are literally impossible to deal with when you don't have the nail. When I got to the resting grounds, the dreamers decided to make me a memory, but instead of killing me right then and there, they just teleported me in the dream world, where I was saved by a kind old lady. And after talking to said old lady and getting the dream nail, I finally got my first non-nail damaging item, the dream shield. And until I get some better gear, this spinny boy will be my best friend. And to test the power of my newly acquired friend, I went to beat a maggot cosplaying as a knight. And here folks, we have the last four snail usage. You can get him down using the shield without a problem. But when he goes down, the shield hits his armor, not his face. So you are forced to use your nade to heal him. And because I was already here, I decided to just finish the job right then and there. I think you can come back later and spell his ass though. After that I went in a back alley and I got a spell from a weird looking snail. Was, was I just drugged? Anyways, I just went with the flow and killed the scared bug who was just protecting himself. I did the same thing for the green pet one. But I wish I didn't, because in Green Pad I got to experience something horrible. Capitalism. Now comes the best part of this run. Did you know you can kill Vengefly King using the Dream Shield and you will also not save Zoe doing this? I don't actually know if anyone else found this. But this is a blessing in disguise, 
You get some geo and you don't have to talk with that little prick anymore. Fuck yeah! I finally got to the Hornet fight. And I thought I will need to whittle her health down using the shield and while that is practically correct, I discovered that when she falls from her string attack, you can demail her for some soul and actually use some spells against her. Or heal, if you're bad. Oh, don't you worry dreamers. I will find you and give you your normal pills. After this I went on a bit of an unlock spree. I went and got the Thorns of Agony charm. Ah yes, I can finally have some personal space. I went to Dirtmouth and bought the quill from Cornifer's smoking wife. I went to Fungal Waste, got to the Queen Station and then I finally got the Mantis Claw. I went to the City of Tears and I cuddled with Coral on the bench and then I listened to the ambience. For but a moment. I continued onwards and after defeating two bosses and experienced capitalism for the second time, I got to the Soul Master Arena. Truthfully, he's not that hard, his moves are pretty easy to dodge. The only problem is that at this point in the game, the only way to deal damage to him is my shield and it deals 5 damage and with his 400 HP he is basically a tank. With the Soul Master dead and the new spell in my pockets, I finally went to Crystal Peak and got a Crystal Heart. I decided to stay in the Crystal Peaks for a tad bit longer and farm 1000 Geo to buy a simple key from Sly. Even though I forgot that there was one in the City of Tears. But before going in the sewers, I had to find a way to make fighting easier. Enter the Dream Wielder charm. Early, this is probably the best charm, since it makes getting soul with the dream nail not take 10 years and double the amount of soul you gain. To get the charm, I had to kill the dream ghost, and they were fine most of the time. Yeah, as I said, most of the time. This boss can personally jump off a cliff. I also had to... Yeah, let's not talk about it. After getting the Dream Wielder charm, I ventured into the sewers where I fought the Pupu Protector to open Isma's groove. For a second, I was the main girl in the Japanese anime, and after getting the tear, the sprite was no longer dangerous to me. Now it's finally time for the Dreamers. On my way to the first Dreamer of this challenge, I got the speedrun skipped first try, and after fighting the Watcher Knights two times, I went to Salubra to replace the shield with Shaman Stone, since the shield is pretty useless against these guys. The words for this fight are dream nailing and abusing iframes. Try to dream nail them when they jump towards you and use desolate dive when they are grouped up. Don't take me wrong, it sounds easy but it's really not. I want to die. After finally defeating all 5 of them, I got to Lurian and beat the crap out of him for using the telescope to spy on the people of Hollowness. And by the way, trimmers don't count since this is 100% false nail usage. From a creep who spies on people using a telescope, we go to anime. Uwu was just as easy as ever, didn't even come close to dying, and after beating it, there was finally no more anime. After that, I witnessed an old man finally accepting that he is old, and I beat the crap out of Monomon for creating anime. Kinda fitting that the anime team dreamer of the video has tentacles, don't you think? Anyways, after this fight, I went towards deepness, and I was trying to postpone the Mantis Lord fights as much as I could, since I knew that the dream nail can't get them, so I just had to go back to my roots and... With the mantises beaten and the respect of the tribe, I went to beat Hera for single-handedly creating the Hollow Knight Arthur IV subreddit, and after 
Haha, insert a deep nested bad joke here, some kidnapping and getting lost in the beast den, I finally got to take revenge. This is for all the people who googled Hollow Knight Hornet just to show their friends the character! With the dreamers dead, I knew I had to find another way to gain soul in the Hollow Knight fight, since they don't give up soul when you dream nail them. With this thought, I went and saved only 10 grabs to get the grab song charm, and then I went back in deepness to get the weaver song charm. With this two and shaman stone, I tried to fight the Hollow Knight, but the weaverlings were a bit too slow for my liking, so I went and farmed 1000 geo to buy a charm notch from Salubra, so I can use Sprint Master and make the weaverlings a bit faster. The Hollow Knight fight was by far the best one I had in this challenge. Because of the fact that I had to wait to get soul, I really got to see how much of a struggle and not an actual fight it becomes in the third and fourth phase. He starts to do a lot more infection attacks and in their last phase the Hollow Knight does this failed swing and collapses just staying there, in pain. Man, the final boss of this game is awesome. With the Hollow Knight down, the challenge was finally over. I am truly curious if it's possible to do absolutely zero nail damage. So if anyone finds a way to do it, I hope to see it somewhere on YouTube. And now, the only thing left to do is wait 10 more months for Silksong. <laughs>